The case Sahin versus Turkey was brought before the European Court of Human Rights in 2004 by Leyla Sahin, who filed an application against the Republic of Turkey alleging that her rights and freedoms under the Convention for the Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms have been violated by the country's ban on wearing the Islamic headscarf in institutions of higher education. As a Muslim, Sahin considered it her religious duty to wear the Islamic headscarf. As a student at the University of Istanbul, she was denied access to a written examination, refused admittance to her various lectures, and prohibited from enrolling in a course. These refusals were made on the basis of a directive from the university's vice chancellor, which stated that students with beards and Islamic headscarves would be refused entry to lectures, courses, and tutorials. Before Sahin left Istanbul to continue her studies in Vienna, she filed an application against the Republic of Turkey with the European Commission of Human Rights. Claiming her rights and freedoms had been violated by the ban, the European Court of Human Rights had to render a decision on whether a ban by a secular country on wearing religious clothing in institutions of higher education violated students' rights and freedoms under the Convention for the Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms. Sahin relied on Article 9 of the Convention for the Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms, which states that first, everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion, and second, freedom to manifest one's religion or beliefs shall be subject only to such limitations as are prescribed by law and are necessary in a democratic society in the interest of public safety, for the protection of public order, health, or morals, or for the protection of the rights and freedoms of others. Section 1 successfully supported her argument, as Sahin was wearing the headscarf to obey a religious precept and the ban did interfere with that. However, Section 2 did not, as in pluralistic democratic societies where multiple religions coexist, the state has a duty to be neutral in ensuring public order and religious harmony to ensure mutual tolerance. The state must be able to justify proportionate regulations in maintaining public order and religious pluralism. The Vice Chancellor's ban passes this proportionality test. As a secular state, Turkey has historically banned the wearing of religious attire outside of places of worship or at religious ceremonies. The following domestic policies are relevant. First, in 1989, Turkey's constitutional court decided that the granting of legal recognition to a religious symbol was not compatible with the principle that state education must be neutral. Second, in 1990, Section 17 of Law Number 2547 stated that the choice of dress shall be free in higher education institutions, provided that it does not contravene the laws in force. A year later, in 1991, the Constitutional Court ruled that this provision did not permit headscarves to be worn in higher education institutions. The Vice Chancellor's directive was not intended to infringe on the student's freedom of conscience or religion, but instead to comply with the laws and regulations in force. A case supporting Turkey's position is Dalab v. Switzerland, which was adjudicated in 2001. Dalab, an Islamic convert, was prohibited from wearing the Islamic headscarf while employed as a Swiss state primary school teacher. The court stressed that the Islamic headscarf was a powerful external symbol, not compliant with the rules of quality and non-discrimination. In the Turkish context, it was observed that the wearing of the headscarf may have great impact on those who choose not to wear it, as the scarf carries political significance and is heavily associated with extremist political movements which seek to impose their beliefs on society. This was considered by the court to be detrimental to religious pluralism. In making its decision, the court drew on the concept of margin of appreciation. The European Court of Human Rights developed this concept when considering whether a signatory of the European Convention on Human Rights has breached the declaration. It allows the court to account for the fact that the convention will be interpreted differently in different signatory states. The court ruled that giving due regard to Turkey's margin of appreciation, the interference here was justified in principle and proportionate to the aim pursued. Thus, Article 9 had not been breached, and Sahin lost the case by a margin of 16 to 1.